All right, one last note about rotational motion, and that is units. It's very important that when solving rotational motion problems, we're using the correct units for rotational motion, and they're a bit different than what you might be used to. The standard unit for rotational motion in physics is the radian. Now, if we think about degrees, which we're probably the most familiar with, we would say that one entire rotation around a circle, so we think about starting at zero degrees, going all the way around the circle until you get back to that zero degrees, that would be what we would call 360 degrees around the circle, right? So radians are just another way of expressing this idea. Uh, you know, if you begin at zero radians, uh, 45 degrees would be pi over four radians, 90 degrees would be pi over two radians instead, and you've probably seen this before if you've seen the unit circle. Um, if you make it all the way around the circle, right, so back to where you began, instead of 360 degrees, that would be what we would say two pi radians. And you've probably seen this before also with circumference, right? Circumference of a circle, the distance around the edge of the circle is two pi r, two pi times the radius. So that two pi comes up there as well. All right. Now, the important thing is to be able to convert from degrees or rotations into radians. And so what we, what we often do is we're given a value for rotation. So we'd say, oh, you know, a wheel is um, spinning at a rate of 30 rotations per minute, or RPM. You've probably seen this in your car as well. If you've looked at the dial on your dashboard, there's an RPM, or rotations or revolutions per minute. A rotation and a revolution just mean making one full way around the circle. And so if we want to convert rotations to radians, what we can do is we can just say that one rotation right, is equal to 2 pi radians. Right? If we make it one full way around the circle, we've done 2 pi radians of rotation. So that's our conversion factor. So if you want to take, let's, I don't know, say 3 rotations in 1 second, just as an example. Right? This is going to be an example problem. And we want to convert from rotations per second to radians per second. Well, we already have our conversion factor, right? This is just like dimensional analysis. One rotation is equal to two pi radians, and so the rotations will go away, and that would be six pi. Radians abbreviates as rads. So <laughs> instead of radians, we'll just say six pi rads in one second. So that would be the rotational speed or rotational velocity in radians per second if you're given like rotations or revolutions per second. Now, if you're converting from degrees to radians, well, it's the same idea. 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi radians, right? Same thing. So for example, if you were told that an object uh, goes through 180 degrees of rotation in maybe even one second, right? Then you could just say, well, it's 360 degrees for 2 pi radians, we'll say rads here, and then the degrees will cancel, and you will get uh, 2 pi times 180, so that's a bit um, less obvious, and then you'll divide that by 360, that would actually end up being just pi radians per second, right? And that makes sense because 180 degrees is equivalent to one half of 2 pi, which will just be pi. So this is how you would convert from rotations per second or degrees per second into radians. In a lot of problems, you're given rotations per second or revolutions per second, same idea. So you'll need to be comfortable going from a rotation to a radian. And all you have to do is multiply the number of rotations by 2 pi. And uh, as a reminder too, 2 pi is roughly 6.28. So it's important to, to, you know, kind of get a feel for how many radians are in one rotation. About six radians is one full revolution. And so um, it's important just to get a feel for radians. If you haven't used radians a lot before, we will be using them quite a bit throughout this unit. Um, the standard unit is a radian. So make sure whenever you're solving problems and you're using delta, like theta, for example, so delta theta, our angular displacement, omega, our angular velocity, and alpha, our angular acceleration will all take units of radians, and we'll see that in a moment. I've actually gone ahead and written them here too. So delta theta will be measured in radians, our angular displacement in radians. Omega, our angular velocity, will take units of radians per second, just like velocity was like meters per second. And alpha, angular acceleration, will take radians per second squared, just like 
linear velocity or linear acceleration, it was meters per second squared. So radians is going to take the place of meters here as our standard unit for rotational motion.